Telecommunications and Media Office. And this is the State of the Province uh, Address Press Conference of the uh, Governor of the Province of Ilocos Norte, Governor Matthew J. Marcos Manoto. And together with the Governor are some department heads of the Provincial Capital. We have uh, on the health sector, Dr. Helio Balbag, our Provincial Public Health Consultant. We have here with us also the Tourism Officer of the Province of Ilocos Norte, our Provincial, provincial Tourism Officer, Mr. Ayan Ri Raquel. And of course, the uh, Agriculture Office, uh, Mamaya Po. And uh, we have the Economic Group Department, which is composed of the MSME, Invest Office, and the PESO, or the Public Employment and Service Office, uh, represented by Mrs. Elma Gabriel, Mrs. Uh, Ronely uh, Bueno, and Ma'am Lisette Bitancor, respectively. And of course, we have our education department uh, by uh, Dr. Dani Dakiwag. And uh, as usual, we have here with us our very supportive members of the uh, Governor's Press Corps of the province of Ilocos Norte, represented by the broadcast and print media. And ladies and gentlemen, this uh, pre state of the province address press conference of the governor, I uh, mapapakinggan ninyo sa mga iba't ibang radio stations dito sa ating provincia and uh, sa mga official Facebook page ng ating provincia, gaya ng uh, Provincial Government of Ilocos Norte Facebook page, the Pigeon Communications and Media Office uh, Facebook page, and the official Facebook page of our dear governor, na Macho Marcos Manoto. So to begin with, let us now start, let us now hear the opening message of our dear governor. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks, Vicky. And uh, to Tony, who will be moderating today. Um, once again, uh, thanks for coming. Um, uh, well, Suguru, uh, we're all well aware of uh, why we're here. Uh, we'll be uh, running through some uh, updates no? um, in key areas of uh, the PGIN. No, kaya naman nandito po ang uh, uh, dear DEP heads po natin, uh, department heads. So uh, we're looking forward to this uh, laying the foundation for uh, my SOPA uh, next week. Uh, so thanks again for coming and uh, good morning, especially to our friends from the media. Thank you. Okay, maraming salamat po, Governor. So, uh, mga department heads na nandito ay nag-prepare sila ng mga PowerPoint sa kanilang mga uh, activities or significant uh, accomplishments sa kanilang mga offices. So, ang unang mag-present po ay si Dr. Helio Balbag ng uh, health sector. Our very dynamic governor, the Honorable uh, Matthew Marcos J. Manotok, fellow presenters, uh, members of the media, department heads, pleasant good morning to all. At the start of the term of our beloved governor, one of the trust incorporated in his sirmata ni Lucano, narimat a sirmata, is health. Health for all Ilocanos, health that must be affordable, accessible, available, 
efficient in the delivery of health services. That's the reason why at the very start, our Honorable Governor initiated a, the implementation of several projects and programs in the improvement, upgrading of our hospital facilities under the provincial government of Ilocos Norte, as these are the centers of health development in the province. May I now present to you the notable major projects and programs. Accomplishment in the province of Ilocos Norte with regards to hospital services. We have uh, the construction of new building, improvement, expansion, and rehabilitation of existing facilities that includes all our hospitals. There are six of them, the Governor Roque Biablan Senior Memorial Hospital, the Bangi District Hospital, the Dingras District Hospital, the Dunya Jose Pedralin Marcos Memorial Hospital, the Piddig District Hospital, and the Bintar District Hospitals. All are strategically located in the province of Ilocos Norte. For this improvement, construction, expansion of the different hospitals, we have the following uh, uh, budget. For the Governor of Kabeblan Senior Memorial Hospital, we have 78,866,000. Bangi District Hospital, 25,945,429 pesos. Dingras District Hospital, we have 33,823,536. For the Dunya Jose Pedralin Mar Mariano Marcos, Doña Jose Pedralin Marcos Memorial Hospital, 55,724,430. Piddig District Hospital, 39,999,999 pesos. And Bintar District Hospital, 6 million pesos. All these are proportionately and have been implemented at the very start. Most of these projects now are completed and inaugurated and the others, I'm pretty sure they are 90% completed and to be inaugurated in the next few months. Uh, because of the pandemic which we had, uh, which started in the early part of, June 20, of, January, of year 2020, uh, through the initiative of our beloved governor, he requested the construction of isolation facilities. These are all funded by the Bayanihan to uh, program of the national government with the able support and assistance, of course, of the provincial government under our honorable governor. There are two facilities which, uh, which uh, are considered uh, COVID hospitals at the start of the pandemic. We have the Governor Roque Beblan Senior Memorial Hospital and the Bangi District Hospital. These uh, uh, facilities are now completed and the amount for the Roque Beblan Isolation Facility, 15 million and for the Bangi District, 5 million. These are being used now for our COVID patients. Aside from our infrastructure development, we have also the purchase of several medical, surgical, laboratory, diagnostic equipment. Uh, part of this is our MRI zone 
to be in operation, including our dialysis center with five machines soon to be in operation. Uh, other equipment, we have the uh, CT scan, we have also the uh, major surgical equipment, uh, portable x-ray, ventilators, oxygen concentrators, our high flow oxygen machines, these are all uh, purchased by the provincial government in order to improve our delivery of hospital services. The amount for this uh, equipment for all the hospitals is uh, 75 million. This is aside from the Department of Health, uh, Health Facility Enhancement Program uh, 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 delivery or, or our acquisition of several equipments. Doc, may we go back? Yeah, so I think uh, ito lang po, let's uh, emphasize the uh, almost 260 million uh, that we spent, no? This is from uh, PJN budget on the infrastructure at our six different uh, medical facilities. Uh, yes, Governor, uh, these are already completed, inaugurated, and the others uh, soon to be in operation or to be inaugurated. Yeah, and I think uh, something to point out lang is, uh, of course, gr of course, Grasma is our main focus, being our premier uh, hospital, no, sa provincia. But we also um, focused on improving Dingras, uh, Dingras District Hospital, as it's the uh, premier provincial hospital naman po sa second district. So we wanted to make sure that, of course, uh, both the first and second districts have uh, their respective uh, flagship uh, hospitals, provincial hospitals, and uh, uh, we upgraded, of course, our buildings and our um, equipment, our supplies, and most importantly also, our staffing, no, the people who uh, make up our hospitals. For most to mention here during this pandemic is the establishment of the oxygen refilling plant at the Governor Roca B. Ablan Senior Memorial Hospital. This is a very important, significant project because long before the pandemic, we have already this uh, in operation, this refilling plant. And during the pandemic, we're in so many provinces or places needs oxygen. Here in Ilocos Norte, we have this oxygen supply refilling plant that saves life to many of our constituents. Hindi na tayo mag order pa sa ibang lugar, San Fernando, Dagupan, or Manila. Here, we have now, in our own province, this oxygen refilling plant. Supply the necessary needs of our patient. Also, mentioned here, worth, worth it to be mentioned here, is the establishment of the Malasakit Center during the time of our governor. Last uh, October or November, it was inaugurated. And this is a one-stop shop to, for the medical and financial assistance of our indigent patients. Hindi na pumupunta yung mga pasyente kung saan-saan, utang o hingi ng pambayad sa hospital. Nandyan na yung malasakit center. And this is through the able, strong leadership in each establishment by our dear governor. Also, with regards to uh, hospital services, 
all our hospitals now have acquired different ambulances through the purchase of the provincial government budget and donation sought by our governor from the Philippine Charity Substick Office and others and there are two other host ambulances coming soon to be received. These are the pictures of our hospitals, facilities. Here, uh, the first here is the, this is the newly inaugurated uh, Dingras District Hospital building on top. Then below we have uh, the oxygen refilling plant, then our new ambulance at uh, this is uh, for Bangi. Then this is the isolation facility, one of the isolation facility in Bangi. That one. Yeah. So with all these uh, projects, uh, improvements of our hospital, hospitals we will be we will be able to deliver the best hospital services to our people and i'm pretty sure more are coming as there are so many projects for a hospital development in the pipeline uh, thank you very much and uh, Pleasant. Good morning again. Okay. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Helio Balbag. So, there you are. Gagayan kayo ang kakamsat. Ang dami pong na-acquired at na-improved na services ng ating salon at or health under the administration of our D. Governor. So, next to present the accomplishment, significant uh, accomplishment on their office, are uh, the group or, or the economic group department of the provincial capital which composed of, as I've said a while ago, Mrs. Elma uh, Gabriel, Ma'am Rona Leia Bueno, and Ma'am Lisette uh, Bitangkor Atuan. Presented, uh, present, uh, ang magpipisan po sa kanila ay si Ma'am Rona Leia Bueno. Kayo ko, Ma'am? MSME muna. Uh, so, si Ma'am... Elma. To our governor, uh, department, distinguished department heads, guests, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will be presenting the highlights of our accomplishments for 2019 to 2021 of the micro and small and medium enterprise office. For our priority programs and projects for the last three years, it was focused on the four major pro priority programs that include the SME promotions and marketing program. The second one is the capability building development program. Then the COVID-19 response program that include the business rehabilitation and the um, financial and livelihood programs for our micro and small and medium enterprise office. For the first program, the SME promotions and marketing program for the last three years, we have already served 11,000, oh, more than 11,000 SMS SMEs and merchants that were assisted by the program and also we have generated a total of 18 million accumulated sales for the capability development building program of the office we have served a total of 609 beneficiaries for our COVID-19 response which that is the business rehabilitation programs. We have served uh, 6,000, more than 6,000 SMEs uh, assisted. 
with a total of 14.3 million generated total sales or total value of assistance. And for our financial and livelihood assistance programs, we have a total value of assistance of amounting to less than 500,000 and with a 120 MSME beneficiaries. So that will sum up our accomplishments for the office, micro and small and medium enterprise office. Yes, ma'am. I have also provided the continuous improvement as presented by the growth of one, one of the major program for our trade fairs is the conduct of Kadiwa market. And as for the last three years, it has been uh, uh, recorded growth from last 2019 to 2020 in terms of our, as it is evidently shown by the increased number of MSME partners of the government to provide employment opportunities for our uh, MSMEs in the province. And also for the growth of our trade fairs, positive din yung increase niya. It is only that we were not able to fully implement all our programs for 2020 due to COVID-19 and some of the restrictions of our uh, mobility of our staff in those low or high risk municipalities. And that would be all. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Elma. Next to present the accomplishment, I see Ma'am Liz Bitancor Atuan ng Peso. Um, good day, everyone. It is with great pleasure to present the highlights and accomplishments of the PGIN PESO. First is the on the labor market information. Uh, our office has always been in close coordination with the DOLE and consistently monitoring vital labor market information and disseminated the same to concerned sectors, including the job seekers who were immensely affected by the social and economic challenges brought about by this global pandemic. So in terms of the assistance extended to applicants, to, ap to applicants seeking for jobs for the past three years from 2019 to, to the present, a remarkable increase has been noted. The trend through followed on the onset of the pandemic that necessarily registered a 52% decrease of applicants assisted in 2019 as compared to 2020. But a big leap in 2021 came, which is a clear indication that despite the pandemic, the PGIN has been seriously engaged in coping with employment concerns in the midst of the crisis. As gleaned from the slide, job placement yielded more than 56% of the applicants in 2019 and 2021, while 32% in, while in 2020. The decline is due to the height of the pandemic that hindered physically, physical mobility and temporary suspension of business operation. To enhance recruitment, hiring, and job placement, the PESO conducted job fairs where employers in the province participated actively. Interestingly, in 2019, 70% of the total number of applicants, which is 4,562, were hired on the spot. A decrease in the succeeding year again is due to the restriction imposed because of the, pan because of the pandemic. The conduct of job fair in 2021 was likewise put on hold again as a consequence of restriction imposed during this period. Based from reports made by our industry partners in the province, available jobs in 2019 is higher than of 2020. These are the solicited jobs from 9,559 to 5,546. The PESA continuously conducts a year-round employment guidance and counseling 
to all the job seekers as they tender application through our office. The PGIN has also a special provision for job opportunities dedicated to students and out-of-school youth known as the SPES or the Special Program for the Employment of Students and Unemployed Nurses in a program known as Sagip Nurse. This slide shows that in 2019, there were 719 beneficiaries. Beneficiaries in, 20, in 2020, we have a remarkable decrease only to 100 beneficiaries, again due to the pandemic. But in 2021, an increase to 683 beneficiaries. As to the Sagip NARS program, the number of beneficiaries remained to 100, which is consistent for the past three years. Employment in the province is not limited only to the jobs that the industries and agencies offer. The PGIN also seeks em to empower the people to engage in other means of livelihood through provision of self-employment opportunities like the Inna Negosya Sa Cariton Livelihood Program where beneficiaries were given a working capital to purchase goods to sell in a cariton and around their communities with the aim to enhance the beneficiaries' income and sustain livelihood program. In this program, which was conceived in 2020, initially there were 50 beneficiaries and in 2021, 34 beneficiaries. The PGIN through the PESO with a program, the In Nakabuhayan Livelihood Program, who has been coordinated closely with TESDA, DOST, private and public schools, and other agencies in developing skills in various fields among interested members of the community all over the province. The skills training are on the areas are in demand as per survey, like computer, servi uh, computer system servicing, shielded metal arc welding, masonry, baking, malungay and squash processing, kamote chips making, manicure, pedicure, and body massage. A total of 200 beneficiaries was recorded in 2020 and increased in 2021 with 350 beneficiaries. And all beneficiaries were given a starter kit. Rapidly responding to the exigencies of the current global crisis, the PGIN has conceived and implemented programs geared towards economic alleviation through emergency employment of displaced workers and special assistance to micro-enterprises micro employees whose wages are adversely affected by the impact of the pandemic. We have the Sagip Mangagawa Pay Now Work Later and the Sagip Mangagawa Assistance to All Micro-Enterprises Employees. And Narimat, Aglaw, Narimat Aglawlaw, a livelihood program for displaced worker. In addition, our partnership with DOLE has heightened with the program of Tulong Panghanap Buhay sa Disadvantage at Displaced Worker or the TUPAD. The number of beneficiaries are reflected on the screen. The limitation that inevitably brought about by the COVID-19 open avenues for, for the PGIN to expand its horizon to reach job seekers and employers giving ready assistance in terms of employment. Work in a localized LinkedIn is a creative, created web portal specially designed for employment, catering to both job seekers in the province and manpower recruiters or employers in the province. Through this website, employers are now able to recruit, hire the suited employees for of job vacancies and the needed qualification are conveniently disseminated and published for applicants. Applicants at a flick of a second can view through this portal prospective job for possible consideration anytime and anywhere. Since its operation in April, there are already 14,066 applicants registered in the job portal with 71 local industries availing of the work-in for their recruitment. It is envisioned that 
Due time that the work in will go worldwide in job placement for Ilocanos as well as recruitment. These are, are our goals, aspirations, and vision to put the PGI and PESO a strong arm in development in the province through its program. Thank you and good day. Yes, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Liz. Ne and uh, last but not least to uh, present on the Economic Group Department, I see si Ma'am Ronale Bueno ng Invest Office. Um, to our Honorable Governor, GovMat, and to our um, the, uh, dear department heads and to uh, our members of the uh, press, good morning. Um, from 2019 to 2021, the Ilocos Norte Trade and Investment Promotion Centers have assisted um, 28 potential uh, investors, of uh, which three pushed through um, their investment. So two are on renew renewable energy sector. So uh, the, the, this, is, this investment is an ongoing renew renewable development with 160 megawatt capacity in Pagudpud and another solar farm in Kurimao with um, 83 megawatt uh, capacity. Also, we were able to close um, an, or we were able to close a private industrial investment which will generate around 230 million worth of annual direct tax revenue for the province and 200 job uh, employment opportunities upon operation. Uh, these are aside from the creation and uh, this is aside from the livelihood creation and other multiplier effects. While one existing renewable um, energy company is about to expand their expansion with uh, a, far, a, a wind farm phase two in uh, Pagudpud and it's already on its uh, permitting stage. To further boost our investment promotions and marketing program, PGIN work with various uh, stakeholders and national agencies to bring Ilocos Norte at the forefront when it comes to investment uh, destination. Earlier in 2021, the Metro Ilocos Norte Information Communication Technology Council, or simply the Metro Ilocos Norte ICT Council was created. This is a multi-sectoral organization that uh, aims to develop the local ecosystem as an ITBPM uh, industry. Also, we were included as one of the digital cities in the national programs of the I in the national program of the ICT Digital Cities uh, PH 2025. So, why with the governor's uh, leadership being the chair for this council, Ilocos Norte was launched as a digital city. This is ahead of the national agency's target that Ilocos Norte will be listed uh, in the digital cities by 2022. Being a digital city, we can get funding for promotion from the national agency and support in promoting Ilocos Norte as an ITBPM investment destination and events hub. Moreover, we started the first mineral reservation project for the province, uh, for the metallic minerals in the province, and secured funding in partnership with DNRMGB Region 1. This will allow for around 10% um, royalty, additional royalty payment from the gross output of mineral products, exclusive of all other taxes and fees from mining operations in mineral reservation. Ensuing step or activities to successfully declare um, an area as a mineral reservation will continue in the next term. In partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry and all LGUs in the province, the, uh, the province and all cities and municipalities reviewed and updated its local investment and incentive codes uh, this is one or another step for us to attract um, investor in coming here in Ilocos Norte. For 
the COVID response activities, this office launched its economic recovery program, the Rise Ilocos Norte, or Reimagine, to stimulate um, the economy. Under this program are various uh, economic stimulus packages that aims to uh, boost our local economy and help those who are uh, greatly affected because of uh, COVID. So by Ilocos Norte was created to organize, regulate, and extend assistance and guidance to existing potential enterprise. So this project turned 120 online sellers and home-based um, enterprises into an LGU license partner merchant. As the project expanded into having a regular Sunday market, 10 active Talipapa vendors became part of the community, generating an accumulated sales of um, over 6.8 uh, million from different pop-up events. Currently, there are 5,632 online followers of which the community was able to sell um, almost 40,000 online worth of uh, sales. Shop In is a stimulus uh, package which we adopted from different uh, countries which aims to boost the confidence of uh, buying from our consumers. And with 2,365 project beneficiaries, receiving 1,000 to 2,000 worth of gift card uh, and having 14 partner merchants who are uh, non-essentials, uh, there is an estimate that over 3 point or 2.3 money was circulated in the local economy. The Livelihood Assistance Project, um, on the other hand, aimed to help business owners and its employees as well as the freelance and those who are included in the informal economy uh, with a cash assistance worth of 5,000 to 633 uh, qualified beneficiaries. Mid-year of 2021, Ilocos Norte's first food park uh, was launched. Um, there are 11 homegrown businesses as tenants generating over 40 local direct uh, jobs. Also, um, alongside the direct local employment, um, the food park also generated over 30 indirect employment or gigs to buskers and freelancers. We still have a long way in the Locos Norte Trade and Promotions uh, Center, and we are one with the Honorable Governor in aiming for economic growth, striving to generate gainful employment and boost local economy to uh, visualize or realize his vision of creating a bright, brighter future for all. Thank you very much and good morning. Yes, thank you, Ma'am Ko. Okay, let us now hear our Provincial Tourism Officer, Sir Ayanri Raquel. Naimbag nga bigat tayo, Amin. Siguro, rugyan tayo ti na pintas nga damag uh, from the tourism sector. While uh, we're used to really big numbers, uh, before the pandemic in 2019, for example, uh, we received 687,713 tourists in our... 330 registered accommodation establishments. Uh, this is our minimum count uh, for those who stayed in our accommodation establishments for at least one night. It, was def it, it could be more no, before the pandemic. So since then, uh, we were on the red, negativo, the numero ti turismo, uh, nakabababa, aya, nang rugi tayo, i 2020 pandemic for the year, we were at negative 93%. Kada iting uh, tawin met, nang naglabas, 2021, nag-positive 76% tayo compared i 2020. However, no sublyanan tayo, ti pre-pandemic numbers were still at negative 88.23 percent.
if we compare, for example, same period, uh, 2020 and uh, 2021 holiday season, we were at positive 14,000% dakkel. However, makita tayo nga nukitain tayo dyan numero, basit lata compared to 2019. Our biggest arrival in the holiday season, January 2, was 2,900 tourists, including day visitors from our neighboring provinces. Very small. However, we remain optimistic as we see a growth in the number of businesses who have opened uh, in the 2020 Bimaba from 330 nagbalin nga 210 the business establishments the accommodation sector nga naglokat with special permit to operate in the 2021 nagbalin nga 248 na nayunan and the event venues tayo, 2020, 28 laeng, 2021, 37. We, re we remain very optimistic as we quickly still respond to the challenges brought about by the pandemic. As we've seen early on, we were among the very first tourist destinations in the country to close. March 18, we had to close our province and all the tourist sites in, that we offer to visitors and had to quickly look for a way to respond to the crisis with a recovery plan that was based so much on probably uh, a lot of it fury untested strategies since this was the, this is the very first pandemic that we're trying to deal with we wanted to i would like to emphasize our approach in our pandemic response since 2020 which is to mitigate socio economic impacts and socio economic because we think that tourism in our province is not only about jobs but it has so much to do with the general social health of the community and for individuals, our mental and physical health. And so we wanted to emphasize on the wealth of uh, open spaces in the province, our history, our uh, culture of resilience and strength as a people and community as we tried to respond to all the challenges of the pro of uh, this pandemic especially kadagitoy uh, but at the same time pinadas tayo nga isarakan ti solusyon dagitoy haan tayo nga nadaduma makita at naka focus tayo iti isolation health but we saw also in the pandemic that pandemic nga kasapulan tayo met the Ilocano nga kunada nga agaliwaksay safely within our province. And so we wanted to, we said we wanted to reopen safely, slowly, and surely. And we had to find a way to do this without any basis, no? But first of all, our governor wanted to focus on our workers. Yeah, we devised a project called Tourism Livelihood Continuity Program, a pioneering project in the country that has benefited thousands. We were the first to release close to 10 million of uh, relief direct for directly going to our tourism workers. And we've done three batches since the first one with uh, a total budget of at least 30 million given to our tourism workers. So we did this, we continued to innovate with 
uh, not necessarily innovate because they're not necessarily new, but find ways to continue with our programs for our public spaces, our events, and give the opportunity, particularly for our own people, to experience our sites you know, and be able to go out from isolation. And uh, as we pre prepared for our reopening, tried to, in, to innovate with technology. We had a, an effort to put together an IT system for registration, for contact tracing, but had to align with our regional partners and had to collaborate and converge for our massive reopening effort in North Luzon. We campaigned for new markets, for relocation to Ilocos Norte, for working, even literally working at the beach, and continued to bravely participate in trade fairs. We were the first to open to the entire Luzon. Uh, massive reopening efforts aided by strict guidelines we had to adhere to. And at the same time, garnered little rewards, no? like we were the best beach uh, in Pagudpud, cited by uh, Travel and Leisure, a New York-based uh, magazine. All throughout uh, the lockdowns in 2020, we underwent a massive uh, master planning effort to update uh, an already 10-year-old uh, plan uh, for tourism development at that time, while looking for new partnerships with national agencies like funding for the testing of tourism workers, which helped us, uh, that helped us uh, garner a safety seal from the World Travel uh, Council. Uh, uh, the very first uh, safety seal given to a province in the country. So we're giving them to specific businesses or tourism sites. But with the effort of uh, our team at the Ilocos Norte Tourism Office, at that time led by Savior, we were able to pursue a safety seal from the World Tourism Council. Our partnerships with uh, our uh, regional destination, destinations was highlighted by our I'm in Love uh, campaign with the province of La Union that helped us generate uh, more traffic from uh, Metro Manila, uh, Baguio, and our partner, La Union Province. And uh, with the, the Ilocos Norte Travel Agencies Association, we continue to host online sales for our tour packages. But all our marketing efforts and all our activities on the on ground, no? Uh, awan no ka ti Ser Serbina no saan tayo nga nagunod ti I would say 100% already aya nga vaccination ti amin nga nakadeploy nga tourism workers tayo and this is uh, the focus of our efforts moving forward to continue uh, finding a solution to all the restrictions no, uh, brought about by the pandemic. And the best way really is to push further our vaccination programs. Uh, right now, with the help of our health departments, uh, we're uh, starting uh, the booster shots even for our tourism workers. We are recovering very slowly and surely. Uh, we don't see uh, in the short term a 100% recovery of our tourism numbers. 
but uh, we are certainly very excited to build back and uh, build back better kunada karon um ken uh, nakita tayo kada ito yung pandemya no anati ag anya, no anati ag paypaisupay nga potential ti probinsya tayo not only for tourists to serve not only tourists coming in but more importantly tapno mapag makapag serbi tayo pay uh, kadagito ya uh, kailian tayo ken pada tayo nga ilokano thank you very much okay gaman kami sir ayan the tourism office so marunong ag presentar iti uh, education department we have here Dr. Danny Dakiwag. May bagabigat tayo namin, Harold Sata. Our dear dynamic uh, governor, Mati Joseph Marcos Manotok, my co-presenters, and uh, all members of the media. We all know that the, the pandemic had challenged us so much in uh, the education sector for maintaining the continuity of learning for our students. In so doing, our dear governor initiated programs and projects to support our students. And uh, yeah. our governor initiated, and to support this, uh, our students, our governor initiated the distribution of uh, tablets, packet Wi-Fi's, and uh, desktops. And we were able to distribute about 11,788 units of tablets, the source of which uh, comes from the Special Education Fund and uh, donations. Uh, we were able to distribute 70 units of uh, packet Wi-Fi's from Globe and uh, Smart to our college students and uh, 20 units of desktops distributed, distributed to the schools. Our governor also intensified the scholarship program and added uh, three more scholarship programs to the present scholarship programs of the provincial government. We have uh, the scholarship program for Doctor of Medicine, Agriculture and Fishery, and uh, the Arts. To date, we are serving a total of 2,047 scholars with a total budget of 64 million. 202,040. Another program initiated to support also our agricultural program in uh, the basic education, particularly that of uh, Ilocos North Agricultural College, um, we were able to install a greenhouse aquaponic amounting to 250,000, and uh, the funding came from the LDS charities. And this will serve as a laboratory for the students to learn how to study agricultural topics in an effective and enjoyable way of using aquaponics. Our schools also were subsidized with their electric bills, particularly that of uh, in the elementary schools with a total budget of 3,096,892.15. Although our students were not able to undergo a face-to-face -face graduation, we were able to award academic excellence to those deserving students. And uh, we were able to, to uh, Award 1,818 grade 12 students province-wide in recognition of their excellent academic performances. 
uh, we all know that we had a limited, uh, pilot limited face-to-face -face classes and, uh, in November. And out of uh, the 10 schools in Region 1, Ilocos Norte Division Office was able to implement in the nine schools of the province. And uh, our governor has sought the assistance of uh, civic spirited organizations to help in uh, this limited pilot program in face-to-face -face classes. We hope that uh, the outcome of this face-to-face uh, -face, uh, pilot program will be okay so that uh, our students will already go back to the schools. These are the programs uh, uh, being undertaken by the Provincial Education Office under our, the leadership of our very own Governor Matthew Joseph Marcos Manato. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Dakiwag. Punta na tayo sa agriculture. Ang magpipresent po ng kanilang mga accomplishment ay si Mrs. Teresa Baknat, ang OIC Provincial Agriculture Officer. So, <clears throat> magandang gumaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, most especially po sa ating uh, gobernador, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, so... Uh, in behalf of the Provincial Agriculture Office, so ito din po yung highlights of accomplishments uh, for the period 2019 to 2021. Uh, so since uh, isa po sa focus po ng ating uh, governor ay yung um, pagka-develop po at saka to boost the high-value crops uh, production. So... Kakamihan po sa mga interventions po namin sa agriculture ay patungkol po sa uh, pag-develop po sa ating high-value crops uh, production. So, uh, ito po yung uh, highlight po niya, yung part one sa high-value crops nga po. So, um, next po. So, ito po yung mga support po namin sa uh, high-value crops production and sa tobacco po yung pag-provide po ng mga irrigation equipment and then pag-repair po ng mga irrigation facilities. So gusto po kasi natin na masustain po yung uh, vegetable production po natin kahit po uh, off-season off -season po siya at saka sa linman. So we have a total of 31,087,000 po na interventions po sa agri-infrastructure and machinery support po sa high value production. So, ito po yung mga uh, documentation po namin sa uh, pag-award and pag-distribute po ng mga agri-infra support at mga machinery support po sa high value and tobacco production. So, uh, next po. Uh, sa sunod po naman po ay yung production support. So, yung production support na naman po ay ito po yung mga uh, vegetable seeds sa uh, fertilizers. So, we have a total of uh, more than 6 million po na na i-assist uh, po natin sa ating mga uh, vegetable farmers. So, ito po ay sa mga backyard gardening para po may uh, readily available po na source of uh, vegetable, uh, lalo na po noong kasagsagan po ng ating pandemya. So, ito po yung mga uh, na-distribute po namin, mga seed, fertilizers. And next po. Uh, so, meron din po kaming mga livelihood uh, assistance and market uh, linkage. So, yung mga micro-co-ops, ito po yung mga uh, maliliit na co-op, yung mga nag-i-start up pa lamang. So, nabigyan po sila ng uh, livelihood assistance in the form of fertilizer and feed. So, nirocall up po nila uh, ito para po ma-sustain. And then, nung kasagsagan po kasi ng pandemic ay apektado yung pag-market ng mga uh, uh, fruits and vegetables. So, nagkaroon po tayo ng assistance sa kanila na bilhin yung mga surpluses nila. So, uh, ito po yung mga ginawa po natin noong pandemic. Uh, binili po natin yung mga surplus uh, vegetables po nila para po matulungan yung mga vegetable farmers po natin. Uh, okay, so uh, another one is the pag-rehab po ng mga bamboo industry natin sa Ilocos Norte. So, 
Uh, we have already capacitated them for the CASPOR work. So, nagkaroon po tayo ng mga trainings sa apat na pilot po natin sa Batak, Sarat, Kurimau, and Pauay po. So, yan po yung uh, launching doon sa Batak City sa ating project na bambu. Next po. So, another highlight of the accomplishment is the uh, implementation po yung kinatawag po natin na INAPES, yung Ilocos North Agriculture and Fishery Extension System. So, ito po ay nag-take effect noong napirmahan na po ng uh, MOA between the Department of Agriculture, the PGIN, and uh, ATALS, other ATALS and line agencies po na kasama po natin sa pag-implement po ng ating mga uh, projects from national, regional, and local po. Kasama po natin yung mga uh, LGUs. Okay, so in support po sa uh, pag-implement po natin ng INAPES, so ito po yung uh, recently inaugurated uh, uh, INAPEC building. So it was inaugurated last December with DA Secretary William Dar with our uh, PGIN official po, led by our governor. So, another one po na activity natin under INAPES ay yung tinatawag po natin na clustered farming ng mga focused commodities. So, nagkaroon po tayo ng mga uh, pag-establish ng uh, mango integrated with calamansi and then yung onion and then yung garlic po. So, ito po yung mga na-establish na nang clustered farming po uh, with the INAPES. Okay, so another very big project po na collaborative project and initiated by the PJN is yung PRDP, yung Philippine uh, Rural Development Project. So, nagkaroon po tayo ng uh, completed sub-project na farm to market road and then yung livelihood assistance po natin sa uh, Bakara Sanhera, uh, ito po yung commer commercialization of the uh, Ilocos garlic. So, ito po yung mga dalawang malaking pong project natin under uh, PRDP, uh, a collaborative project with the PGIN. Okay, so, uh, yan lamang po yung mga uh, highlights po ng ating accomplishment. Uh, uh, gusto ko lang po idagdag na nagkaroon din tayo ng market assistance po sa mga uh, uh, garlic grower po natin dun sa uh, Mayani. Ito po yung online platform so, since nagsisimula pa lang po tayo, nakapag-purchase po tayo ng almost 500 kg na garlic. So, naitay up po natin sila sa Mayani. So, we'll hope na next year po ay mas marami po tayong uh, may itatay up na products, not only garlic. So, yung mga onion at processed products po. So, yun lamang po. Thank you very much po. Maraming salamat po. At yan, yes, Governor. Yeah, I, I just like to add uh, dito po sa Agri, uh, we've also been assisting yung mga palay farmers, di ba, na full service, uh, regardless of what stage or what input they need, uh, kahit sa marketing po, uh, we've been helping our palay farmers and uh, I appreciate that some of the media members have also uh, referred some uh, co-ops to us. So, uh, thank you. And uh, also, um, we met with the uh, Indian uh, Embassy diba? in uh, Manila and they will be helping us with our garlic uh, since uh, we, we've noted if, if we take a look at the agricultural data of the province, we are of course the number one producer of garlic in the country but our yield is still low, no? meaning hindi po uh, efficient ang uh, agricultura natin. And that's not just for garlic, that's for uh, almost all crops. No? Uh, even though we're producing good amounts, uh, we're not producing enough uh, relative to the land uh, or the area that is planted. So of course, uh, that leads to us needing to uh, improve our uh, mechanization, no? our technology. Um, Siguro also our uh, soil uh, health or fertility 
uh, and other factors, no? uh, maybe even yung clustering na gin ginagawa po natin. So uh, we can pr mass produce basically, no? uh, and with the end goal of increasing our yield. And of course, um, we're looking to continue our partnership with uh, MMSU, no, especially po sa product processing um, and sa agribusiness side. So, oh, and I'd also like to update pala, um, not related to um, agri, but uh, yesterday alone, just FYI, um, I won't give the full breakdown, but uh, yesterday alone, we had almost 150 uh, test positive dun sa border. So, uh, 145 na antigen positive na halo-halo po yan sa ibang categories. So, um, I guess it goes to show that, uh, you know, even though we're being precautionary um, with our EO, um, I think it's the right thing to do for now, no? Kasi nakikita po natin na talagang tumataas po ang mga uh, COVID cases with this Omicron variant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor, for uh, this added information. So now, Governor, can we start now the uh, question and answer portion for this person uh, press conference? Ang unang magtatanong po ay si Ronald ng Radio Pilipinas. Uh, good morning, uh, Governor, and to everyone. Uh, Governor, uh, the provincial government of Ilocos Norte, through your uh, leadership, and uh, in co collaboration of the, de uh, the Department of Agriculture, ay uh, nagbigay kayo ng uh, napakaraming tulong sa ating mga farmers, uh, iba't ibang tulong. But uh, despite those uh, support, uh, ay uh, talagang nahirapan pa rin yung ating mga farmers. Sumiyak pa rin sila dahil sa mababang presyo ng uh, mga produktong agrikultura, lalo na yung palay. So, ano yung uh, gagawin natin at uh, support sa kanila upang uh, uh, sila naman ay uh, makaluwag-luwag at uh, guminhaw po ang kanilang paumuhay, Governor? Thanks. Uh, well, uh, ayun nga po, uh, as of now, especially with our palay farmers, uh, basically, uh, full service na po kami. No? So, kahit sa... Uh, pre-planting po nila in terms of uh, the seeds, uh, the equipment and heavy machinery that they need. Uh, we want to augment all stages of um, the process. Uh, but with that said, no, uh, even as many uh, fertilizers or um, you know inputs that we can give them, kumbaga band-aid fix din yun eh, no? Uh, we know that the price of palay has obviously uh, collapsed at uh, hindi siya mo, mukhang hindi siya tataas. No? That's why uh, we, when I go around and talk to the farmers, sinasabi ko sa kanila na, look, uh, ito na to. No, Let's not have false hope that uh, suddenly uh, the price of palay will begin to rise again. No? That's why uh, what we see as the long-term solution is shifting away from palay, no? Na, that's why we push everyone towards HVCs, no? Na, let's move towards something that's more marketable and more profitable. Um, and kahit kami na lang magbibigay ng mga uh, seeds and mga inputs po nila. Uh, that's why uh, itong uh, clustering farming that we're doing, uh, especially under uh, OPAG, is so critical. And uh, we hope to onboard uh, more farmers. No, na uh, okay lang siguro sa first uh, planting nila palay. Pero dun sa second, no, uh, sana wag 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 palay ulit para at least uh, kikita sila sa second and third uh, planting po nila. Uh, oh, Governor, while doing this uh, new innovation, uh, uh, are we not uh, uh, bring back the uh, buyback? Uh, program? We can naman. Uh, that's always an option. Um, but, of course, um, kumbaga last resort po yan, no? Uh, the NFA is there naman uh, to buy at a fair price. And, uh, 
we want to actually play the role of uh, uh, connector, no? Parang liaison lang kami. Uh, in terms of us actually buying the palay, that presents a problem also. Kasi anong gagawin namin sa palay, no? So uh, we'd like to help them sell, uh, not necessarily for us to be the ones to buy. Kasi syempre, uh, we don't have a need of that kind for uh, palay. Thank you, Gawin. Salamat, Ronald. Next question is si Bernard Vern ng IFM. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Gov. Um, speaking about, you've mentioned earlier, sa COVID-19, eh, nasa recovery plans na tayo, pero the cases are rising. And you've mentioned earlier, more than 100 na yung nag-positive. Uh, yung sa EO lang go, pwede bang i-emphasize or talagang i-highlight natin kung ano ba talaga? No vaccination, no entry in Ilocos Norte and the rest of your EOs go, please. Thank you. Well, uh, for residents, uh, of course, um, they will be admitted, no? Kasi constitutional right po nila na makauwi. Uh, for non-residents naman po, uh, for tourists, will be disallowing unvaccinated tourists. So, yung mga tourists na napapasok, kailangan bakunado na po. Uh, for APOR naman, na mga non-tourist, non-residents, um, Kumbaga parang discouraged, no? Uh, even if they're APOR, uh, but they're uh, non-residents, and they're coming into the province, um, we can't outright say na bawal, kasi syempre APOR has, uh, uh, should be able to travel, but uh, as much as possible, uh, minimize the entry of um, non-residents who are unvaccinated. Thank okay, you. may follow-up ka, Bernard? Yeah, about sa recovery po uh, ng Ilocos Norte, do we have uh, still plans uh, to not to be uh, derailed po, Governor? I in which regard? Sa turismo po? Sa turismo din po. Kasi naapektuhan na rin pati yung tourism natin bumababa na according to the report also of our Ilocos Norte Tourism Office. Yeah, um, for tourism, we have no plans to shut down. No, uh, we'll keep our tourism uh, industry open. Uh, I think, uh, siguro masasabi natin na gone are the days of hard lockdowns. No, uh, these have to be very measured and uh, very cautious and uh, nuanced. No, hindi yung kagaya dati na ECQ or MECQ. Uh, wala na pong ganun. So. Uh, we'll see, no? We'll just have to, uh, as they say, uh, dance with the virus uh, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, see how it reacts and uh, see all, consider all the factors on the ground. But uh, as of now, uh, no plans to uh, shut down our tourism industry. Okay, thank you, Governor. Your turn, Lani Adriano of PNA. Just a follow-up, Governor, about the, your assurance that you will not be shutting down our borders regarding pa rin po ito about our tourism. Because we have seen the works of Ayan and the rest of the DOT trying to promote the province. As, uh, so we have seen how Ilocos North is, is really a tourist gem, not only in the north, but also in the entire country. So the question, ko po, Governor, is that uh, how can we make our province open to everyone na less hassle kasi napansin po natin yung sa taranad.ph as well as yung sa online registration ng province, may mga technical glitches pa rin po as of today. Yeah, thank you. Well, we've taken a couple of steps no, to address that kasi uh, we get that complaint frequently na down yung website, hindi maka-register. So, uh, we're allowing um, Kumbaga manual registration, no, where they can just call and inform us. Uh, I asked Ian uh, to set up tourism hotlines, no, na answerable 24/7, uh, where people can call and register 
uh, via phone, no, uh, para mas madale. Uh, we're also taking walk-ins, no, so hindi po kailangan ng pre-registration. You can walk in and uh, register on the spot. So uh, we're trying to make it as easy as possible, uh, para wala nang problema and uh, kumbaga yung mga hotlines po natin will serve as uh, parang concierge or help hotline no para makapasok lahat. Um, additionally, we are also um, in the next few weeks na ayan will be hopefully opening up our water park sa Pawai. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the um, island, the inflatable island is already yeah, that's in the province now. Ah, okay. I was gonna say in the country. It's already in the province. So, kumbaga, kung nagaten po kayo ng kids party, yung parang bouncy castle, ang uh, parang oversized bouncy castle ang ilalagay po sa Pawai Lake. So we're looking forward to that. Siguro baka yung iba nakita na nila na may mga beach chairs, beach or beach beds. Yeah, may mga beach chairs, so magiging uh, lounging area um, right in front of the inflatable island. So we're hoping, um, well, we're confident, no? Na, of course, that will turn heads, uh, bring more attention to the province. And uh, I think it'll be the first, no? Uh, the first in uh, the region. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, of course, ito pa yung long-term goal natin na talagang i-develop uh, no? at i-maximize ang Pawai Lake. And then, of course, uh, DOT also opened up the bird watching on the other side, which uh, masasabi ko na medyo niche market, but uh, also a valuable uh, activity. For this year, Gob, may mga tangible ba na commitment yung DOT to help the province promote further yung tourism po natin? Sir, Ayan. Uh, opo, very recently, uh, the Secretary visited the, our province, Secretary Berna Romulo Puyat. Uh, we have enjoyed the uh, very close uh, partnership and collaboration with uh, the DOT and its uh, allied uh, departments, uh, Tourism Promotions Board. Uh, last year, uh, awarded us uh, funding for our COVID response. And uh, the regional office with uh, Jeff Ortega, our regional director, uh, has also been very helpful. Um, we are con we intend to pursue our uh, pending uh, proposals with uh, uh, the OT, particularly the Tourism uh, Infrastructure uh, Board (TIESA) uh, for the development, further development of Pawai Lake, uh, the Sand Dunes, and other prime uh, tourism properties uh, in the province. Um, we hope that uh, when uh, the funding for Tiesa is reverted no? because linipat uh, for COVID response, yung mga pondo for tourism infrastructure, uh, hopefully pag, uh, kapag naibalik, uh, maging priority tayo. At uh, may uh, commitments naman ang ating mga partners sa DOT um, with the help, of course, of our national officials no, na tumutulong na uh, i-push ang mga proyektong ito para sa ating probinsya. Thank you, Sir Ayan. Go. Yes, go. Thanks. Yeah, I'd also like to make mention of the stack stones no, na nakita po ninyo sa sand dunes. So another um, site, no? another attraction sa sand dunes kasi uh, medyo uh, luma na yung mga dating installation ni San Aimi. So uh, we put up the stack stones which are solar powered stack stones made of resin. 
if I'm not mistaken. Um, so um, very green, no? uh, you can see my solar panels. Siya. And uh, we'll also be uh, wrapping up another installation this year um, at the Pawai Sand Dune. So hope everyone can uh, watch out for the next installation. And uh, additionally, the DOT launched some bike uh, bike trails, diba? Kasama po tayo sa Solsona. So uh, there's also one here in Lawag. So I hope uh, mapapush po natin yan. Medyo adventurous and uh, active, but uh, another alternative. Thank you, Golf. Arlene from DZJC, may gusto daw i-clarify. Uh, good morning, everyone, especially to you, Governor. Uh, we, we went to a different uh, business establishment yesterday, and we interviewed the security guards na ayaw papasukin yung walang bakuna na maipresenta. Tanong namin sa kanila, yung mga tinanong namin, sir, bakit ayaw yung papasukin yung walang dalang vaccination card? Sabi naman nila, uh, pag walang bakuna, hindi pwedeng pumasok. According kay Governor, according sa Capitol, according kay Governor Manoto, sabi pa nga nila, sir, parang um, negative connotation naman yung interpretation nila. Kasi pag, kasi pag walang bakuna daw, hindi pwedeng pumasok. Eh, yun ang interpretation nila dun sa executive order, Governor. Please enlighten. Sir, you mean, uh, siya nagsasabi na negative yung mga pumapasok? Yes, sir. Nagagalit sila kasi parang human rights violation daw yun. Discrimination. Eh, kasi kahit may bakuna ka, wala kang bakuna, nakaka nakakakuha ka pa rin naman ng virus, sabi naman nila. Um, yeah, well, uh, siguro we can find other ways for them to avail of necessary products. No? Uh, let's just say na baka, baka the store can provide um, a transaction outside, no? dun na lang sa door. Uh, I have no um, problems with that. Because if there are essential or uh, you know urgent needs, the people uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated, I agree. Na kailangan may access po sila. So, uh, so we will ask the stores na lang to uh, and all indoor establishments to uh, be considerate na rin, no? na Siyempre, pag may need, no, uh, we can still serve uh, that individual na kahit uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated. Uh, thank you, Gob. Uh, sa presentation ng Invest po ay ang Ilocos Norte has the material for economic progression. What are your plans to further improve the economic situation in our province, especially um, nahihirapan yung mga tao sa COVID-19? Yeah, well, um, we have a, a few investments uh, lined up no, na, uh, will come to fruition this year. So we're hoping that uh, obviously that will um, provide employment. No? At, uh, it will create jobs, of course, for Ilocos Norte. But uh, to be honest, um, sometimes the problem also is uh, even if we're able to create jobs, uh, many times, uh, ayo naman ng mga kakailian natin, de ba? And I think uh, Liz can attest to this. Um, just because, uh, let's say, um, an Ilocano is jobless and my available job, it doesn't mean na <laughs> kuhonin nila. No? So that's also uh, a difficulty that uh, we face kasi. Um, malaking problema na rin para sa amin if we invite a company uh, facilitate their entry they set up and then wala silang ma-employ that ends up uh, be becoming our burden no? kasi kami po ang nag-invite sa kanila so um, 
we'll try to make these jobs that we create as attractive as possible, no? Kasi uh, alam po namin na paminsan mapili din no ang uh, Ilocano. Uh, they they won't just take any job, no. Though they want uh, um, a job that talagang gusto nila. So that's what we have to focus on um, in terms of bridging uh, yung um, business or the employer and of course uh, yung mga tao, yung mga employees. But um, you know, we've um, Soya and the whole invest team and I have been working uh, for quite a while now and uh, I'm confident that this year uh, we'll be able to really uh, show the fruits of our labor. Okay, thank you, Gov. Romel of DZEA. Uh, good morning, Gov. Good morning po sa mga uh, department heads. Gov, tungkol po sa education, madami na po kayong nabigyan ng mga gadget, laptop, tablets. Tuloy-tuloy po ba ngayong taong nito iyong mga programang yan? At saka, may plano po ba tayo na uh, buksan pa ang mas maraming school para sa face-to-face -face learning, Gov? Yeah, um, well, so tablets, um, to be honest, it's not uh, our priority, no? yung mga tablets. Um, we've given out uh, quite a number, 11,800, so almost 12,000 tablets. Um, and um, we've recently, just in December, we approved a... Uh, procurement of 10 million pesos for textbooks. Um, the DepEd reported to us last year that um, our reading comprehension uh, numbers were quite low. So um, their request was to actually uh, procure ito mga English textbooks yata, no? Na, that we bought partially uh, last month. So we'll be prioritizing that you know, textbooks. Um, I still think na there's something to be said about textbooks over gadgets, no? Um, especially sa younger generation po natin. Na, of course, I'm guilty also. Uh, we're all glued to screens, no? So I think as much time that we can uh, take away from screens and uh, focus on books instead, um, that will be beneficial to our students. With regard to the opening of face-to-face -face classes and uh, schools, well, um, you know, I wish I had the authority to open our schools, but uh, I don't. So uh, we're bound to uh, Dep Ed and uh, their decisions. But uh, I think we're seeing that uh, they're warming up to the idea. No, medyo. I think uh, we're all becoming a bit more comfortable with uh, events and schools and work uh, on site uh, amidst COVID. So, sana tuloy tuloy po ang, uh, ang move towards face to face. Kasi, um, iba pa rin, no? iba pa rin ang face to face education, not only the uh, educational component. And, you know, many studies have shown na. Uh, ito pong uh, distance learning or virtual learning is simply not the same. No, it's not, it's not as good as face-to-face -face learning. Uh, but not only the educational impact, but also the uh, social no, uh, impact. I think uh, uh, one under, underrated aspect of going to school is developing social skills. No? Seeing other kids, uh, learning how to, uh, you know, um, socialize, play, talk, you know, in person, and uh, developing EQ as well. So I'm hoping, um, you know, many of these um, skills and uh, intelligences can be developed if we're able to get back to school. Okay, thank you, God. Next is Mr. Herdy Yumol representing Ilocos Times. Congratulations, Governor for your very successful economic programs, which we really need at this time. Uh, I just wanted to clarify some data presented by the lady from SME. Uh, you have served 500,000 individuals uh, with the Chen Danigob 
And with a population of 600,000, that's really an impressive number. But your sales stands at 600,000. So uh, what can we do to improve sales in Chenda de Gob? Yeah, thanks, Herdy. Siguro we can go back to that graphic because I think they're baka na miss um, annotate. The graphic ng uh, SME, I think it was a uh, parang bar graph, no? Na tatlo ba? Yes, Paul. Yeah. I'm not sure if the, um, ano tawag dun? Yung legend or yung key was, uh, uh, yeah, was accurate. Kaya kailangan i-review lahat kasi si Herdy talaga, pag may mali, makikita. Next, uh, no. one back. Yeah, I think it's this. Is it this one? Yeah. Can we just clarify what the uh, what the numbers represent at yung bar siguro? I th this was so uh, major. Uh, we need to rectify the number on the s indicator side, sir, because this was during the creation of the bar graph was it was automatically generated by the system but we will rectify that for uh, th that portion please uh, kindly disregard this part of the portion the the presentation we are just presenting the upward trend okay. as uh, the year goes yeah. on thank yes, you mom of course that does not diminish your accomplishments we are witnesses to how, how hard working you are, all three of you, and tourism in uh, generating jobs. Governor, uh, just a little introspective question. Uh, the pandemic struck the world eight months into your governorship. What did you find out? Because this is a time of self-discovery about the type of leader that you are, given the pandemic. Um, hmm. <laughs> Can I get back to you tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, well, I don't think it was necessarily uh, self-discovery. Uh, Sigurd was more of um, just being challenged no? so thoroughly and uh, kind of confronting everything all at once. No, because. Um, you know, I took uh, office, what was it, July, right? July 1, and then uh, September we had uh, Ineng, right? And uh, it seemed like, you know, we had just gotten over um, Ineng, which had over a billion pesos in damages, agri and infra. And then suddenly, um, you know, COVID was on the horizon. So, um, yeah, I think it was really, uh, what did they call it, a baptism of fire? No, parang uh, biglaan. No, I was really thrown into uh, something that I really didn't expect. No, and I think uh, none of us truly expected. And uh, I think the the hardest part of it all was uh, the uncertainty. No, because in the beginning we really had no idea uh, what this was. No, um, even the WHO, as we know, uh, was a bit too. Um, skeptical of the fact that COVID was airborne, for example. So w we had so many uncertainties, which I think uh, really challenged uh, all of us and uh, brought us to the brink. No? And uh, of course, I had, you know, we, we had all these uh, difficulties like uh, um, the Ilocos Norte timeout, no? and, uh, obviously uh, really hit, hit me hard, um, you know, and forced me to kind of question things. And, uh, you know, I think at first, kasi, I was very, very cautious, right? And then after a while, I think it was 2000, uh, uh, maybe middle of 2020, uh, towards the end, about the third quarter of 2020, where everyone kept saying, oh, let's just live with the virus, diba? Live with it. Uh, nga, that was my mindset. And that's when, you know, the Delta surge happened and, um, 
um, Mariana Marcos Memorial Hospital also spoke out with the Ilocos North at timeout. So I felt like, you know, I kind of um, I made a mistake in not uh, staying as cautious as I should have. You know, uh, but it's uh, such a difficult uh, balance to strike. And uh, I think overall, Naman, we've done fairly well as a province. And I think that uh, that's credit to uh, these guys here, of course, our department heads, but also our uh, frontliners and our medical workers specifically, and uh, all the uniform personnel. Thank you, sir. Next is Ina Blanco of the Philippine Information Agency. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Gov, and to our department heads. Um, I'd just like to go back sa question din po ni Ma'am Arlene kanina on the investment part sa ating province. You have um, initially discussed with Sir Bing during the network briefing news last year, Gov, na uh, you are calling for investors for to come in our province and to invest, especially in the agribusiness sector, lalong-lalo na that we, we, we have um, potential products in the province. Ano po yung um, programa natin or ano po yung mga steps natin to lure or attract more investors po to come and invest here in our province to boost our economy? Thanks, Ina. Well, uh, madami talaga eh. Like uh, even last year, uh, Soya and the whole invest office, we were sending parang gift boxes, di ba? Of uh, Ilocano products with our investment uh, briefer, no? Uh, siguro nakita po ninyo, we've also shared our investment briefer online. So we're quite active in um, basically um, advertising no? and inviting uh, uh, many, many groups to come over. Even just uh, the other day, uh, I think it was January 3, I met with the uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce in Manila and to also invite them over um, to uh, Ilocos. And there was one group, for example, na ano sila, parang leading agri uh, products group. They make a lot of um, ready-to-eat products. So uh, I invited them over, and I think they're interested in uh, coming over and seeing our, our products. Um, Continuous lang siguro, no? Um, I think the Invest Office has been doing good work naman, uh, as mentioned. And uh, our agriculture here in Ilocos is strong, no? I think we all know that. Um, in fact, I think siguro that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why our agricultural uh, produce is so good is because our yield is also low, right? Because it hindi tayo masyadong commercial eh. We don't, we don't cut corners, no? Yung mga farmers po natin don't take shortcuts. Talagang, uh, kumbaga, old school way, no? So, which lends itself to very quality um, harvest. So, I think that's what we can uh, vouch for. Another thing we're trying to figure out is um, uh, NFC. No, Northern Foods Corporation, which the president um, privatized recently. So we're looking for, uh, we're looking to, looking forward to uh, resurrecting yung NFC na naging dormant for how long? No? Na, uh, we know was a prominent tomato paste processing facility, and it has the capacity naman to process. Uh, not just tomato, but other agricultural uh, products. So uh, we want to revive that because I think that will also be uh, of big help, not only for job creation, but also for our existing farmers that will, will be able to sell at a better price. But uh, basically, that's the direction we want to head in is, uh, you know, when, when, when we brainstorm at the Invest office, we think about, okay, uh, what makes us special? No, that's always what you have to think of is, okay, what are the distinguishing characteristics of our province? And uh, it comes down to uh, our agriculture, right? Uh, our tourism, I think we have much to offer. Uh, thirdly is our location, no? uh, being, as we call it, the gateway to China and uh, the East Asian countries. And 
I think we're one of the few provinces also with a uh, international airport and seaport. No, so those are distinct advantages. And uh, we have a highly, a, a highly educated populace. No, na masasabi natin na, you know, most Ilocanos are very well educated. So these are our advantages. But obviously, one of the disadvantages is that we're so far away from Manila. No, so that's what we're trying to battle. Um, oh, and uh, another thing. Siguro everyone knows that PAL is flying Tuesday and Friday already, Manila to Lawag. Uh, they pledged to add another flight uh, starting is January 30, I think, or 29, whichever one is Sunday. Then the last Sunday of January, they'll add another flight. Um, that Sunday, and then every succeeding Sunday. So we'll start to have, uh, starting next month, we'll start to have three flights, three round trip flights from Manila via PAL. So that'll be Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, which is uh, also a tourism push, no? Now, we want people to uh, have that option. And I also asked PAL, na sana babaan na rin yung mga presyo. Kasi <laughs> ang tataas ng presyo, no? Like, when people see 12,000, they think, oh, bakit pang international na yun, di ba? Yun ang iniisip nila. And I think a lot of people also don't know that you can fly to Ilocos. I talk to a lot of people and I invite them over, but they, they, they really don't know na, ah, may, may airport pala kayo, may flight pala. So, you know, that's something we need to push. Uh, we need the flight to uh, be more frequent and be more accessible, no? Mas affordable siya. So, uh, we'll continue to work with PAL um, to um, rectify those things. Para at least alam ng tao. Na, okay, option pala to, if, if I want. Thanks. Thank you, Gob. Uh, Rod Sajan of BZRL, Batak City. Thank you, Ma'am Vicky. Uh, Happy New Year, Governor, and to all of us. Uh, Governor, how do we celebrate our foundation anniversary, or do we have our provincial fiesta this coming month? Sir Ayan. This month? Okay. Um, at dadagiti na kasagana ng uh, uh, activities tayo for our foundation day. Um, umunate uh, tanok ni Ilocano Film Festival. Uh, we have uh, already we are already finalizing the uh, result of our screening of uh, applications uh, for the grant. No, the very first uh, batch last year was, uh, I would say, uh, pretty successful uh, with the participation of at least three of our entries in uh, uh, big festivals uh, in the country and abroad. One of them was an entry in a New York uh, independent film festival. And uh, one was archived in Singapore, and uh, the other one uh, successfully entered uh, Cinemalaya as an official selection. We're very excited no, for this. Uh, we see, Gamin, uh, there's a new, an emerging, and a very good one, uh, culture for film, uh, and a practice for film, I should say, in, in the province. Uh, we have also initially uh, discussed uh, and planned for a uh, smaller version of uh, Tanok uh, ni Ilocano, the festival, the main festival. However, we're, uh, uh, I would say, uh, indefinitely postponing this. Ngayon uh, nakakasate plano for this. But I think uh, to highlight our uh, foundation anniversary, particularly here at the Capitol, uh, at the Tea Project uh, ni Apu uh, Governor Matt for our Kalesas in Lawag. Uh, this is something to, that we are looking forward to. Uh, medyo two years, three years in the making, but uh, finally uh, we'll be able to see 
our Kalesas in Lawag, which is part of uh, the soul of uh, our city and our province, in literally a new light. So this is something that we're looking forward to in the first week of February. Hopefully by February too, uh, no awanti uh, delays na uh, because of the pande because of the new variant, uh, we'll be able to launch uh, our Kales new Kalesa project. Okay. Yes, Gold. Yeah, I think just to add, no, uh, we're very sensitive about hosting events na masyadong malaki na masasabing tao, okay, bakit sinasabi nyo bawal ang events, eh, kayo ang dami nyong events. No? So, uh, we want to be uh, very in tune uh, with the sentiments of the people and uh, we want to uh, practice what we preach. No? Um, but for example, like certain markets, uh, we believe, like our Sunday market, we believe don't necessarily fall into the category of a traditional event. Diba kasi medyo sprawling yung grounds, no, controlled naman. So, um, and it obviously provides um, income. No, and uh, economic activity, which uh, we believe um, must continue. But, uh, you know, as, as I said, we'll continue to um, be considerate you know, of uh, the safety and the example that we're uh, giving and showing to people. Thank you, Gold. Two last questions. Uh, Ronnie, it's your turn now. DCJC. Okay, thank you, uh, Kabiki. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I, I suppose it's already noon time. Gold, um, I can honestly say that uh, the province of Bilogos Norte is in safe hands under your leadership. Unfortunately, a series of uh, shooting incidents happened in the past, and it, was, uh, it has caused alarm throughout the province. And in that uh, situation alone, we will now uh, put uh, the province in the limelight nationwide. We are highlighting Ilocos Norte to be a tourist destination, not only in the north, but throughout the country. Now, my question, sir, is uh, do we have, uh, what is our best guidance to the PNP to avert uh, possible shooting incidents? And most especially, we are now facing the 2022 election. Uh, so that uh, will ensure a very peaceful and orderly election in the province. Thank you, Governor. Thanks. Yeah, well, uh, regarding the uh, latest shooting, no, na, I think it was a parang drive-by. No? Um, it looked like that was a um, parang love triangle. Ba? Diba? I think it's na, no? Yeah, the latest one. Um, that was the case. Um, the others, naman, um, I think one of them was political, masasabi natin, no? uh, of the three, no? the initial three. One of them was political. Uh, the others were not. And um, in all um, incidents, uh, cases have been filed and suspects have already been um, you know, uh, taken in. So um, we can say that um, each of these incidents has been, uh, have been uh, um, addressed. No? And uh, I'm working closely with um, PD Chris, um, our provincial director, Chris Abrano, to make sure that basically on high alert ang lahat ng mga chiefs of police natin. No? That, uh, I told them basically, frankly, na look, um, all eyes are on you guys. No, um, we we can't have anything more happen. Um, they need to really um, have their ear and eye, ears and eyes on the ground. No, they need to know exactly what's going on. Uh, with that said, I've also asked uh, Oba, our uh, office of Barangay Affairs, to also help out. No, because uh, we know that. Uh, ultimately, our intelligence needs to be um, 
high. No, we need to be aware of what's happening. No, and uh, that's also our responsibility uh, as a provincial government. And also, I think it's a responsibility of our communities. No, so, sana we can all um, also contribute to the peace and order no, of our province. Because uh, these are very, um, you know, all encompassing. No? So whether it be Capitan or just, you know, the, an everyday Ilocano, let's share information. If we have it, uh, if there's any threat, if there's any possibility, um, you know, let's report it to the police. But uh, I can assure you that uh, you know I'm closely um, supervising the situation, and uh, the PNP is doing the same. Thank you, Paul. Lastly, last question, Sir Rachel. Yes. Good morning, po sa ating lahat, Sir. Uh, or siguro po sa SME, uh, yung question ko po, Sir. Uh, do you have any plan po, or ano po yung mga plano natin ngayon sa provincial government ng Ilocos Norte? to further expand po or develop yung mga programs natin sa online marketing po ng mga products to further help po yung mga SMEs natin, Governor. We are currently uh, coordinating po and creating linkages between uh, different uh, agencies like... Uh, like uh, the one we are planning to be part of Lazada and also for we have also connections with Miami and uh, the DT, uh, DTI and including also the DOSD for the PGI and one store online project. Okay, thank you po. So I guess wala nang magtatanong po go your parting words po sa event na ito, Governor. Uh, thank you. Thanks to everyone uh, for joining us at uh, the pre sopa press con. And uh, I'll see you guys all on Monday, hopefully, for the SOPA uh, proper. And uh, thanks to our uh, beloved department heads for joining us. And I'm sure we're all very hungry by now. So enjoy your lunch and good day to you all. Just Agnina. Okay, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga media partners and the department heads who participated in sa prep sopa press conference na ito ng ating governor at magkita-kita po tayo sa kanyang sopa state of the state of the province address po sa Monday. Salamat po. Gov, my request. Uh, photo ops daw. Thank you.